What's up, everybody? It's Yvonne with Trout Fly Fishing, back with your bi-weekly fishing report and forecast. This is the September 19th edition. Just when you thought, you saw the last of this grungy, dirty back of a truck. We're back. Back in the back of the truck. Back where it all started. One episode in, we've already gotten kicked out of our uh, studio. Well, we didn't get kicked out. There's construction going on, so we're trying to get away from the noise but uh yeah let's talk about fishing let's talk about uh my favorite time of year the beginning of fall so i took a look at the weather over the next coming weeks in the high country and the you know, weather's going to be or temps are going to be you know low 70s into the mid 60s some 50s creeping in and it's going to generally get cooler as we uh, work through the month uh, through the end of the month so we're going to start to see sort of those cooling temperatures same you know same with those uh, overnight lows you know starting to you know, creep into the mid 30s um, and that means that trichos are going to be on their way out they're still present now they're still effective now especially uh, on the south flat but um, they're going to become less you know less important and we're going to start to see the beginning of uh, blueing olive season so uh, my one of my favorite times of year I know I say that a lot but there are certainly like you know benchmarks or landmarks for for the year and uh, blueing olive season is always uh, you know a season I look forward to whether it be in the beginning of the year in, in March and April into May or uh, you know, end of the year in September October um, you know end of the angling season as they say um, you know, September, October. So uh, I'm a huge fan of these. I like when fish rise in pods to those. You're going to find that on a lot of rivers uh, in the near future. So yeah, let's get to it. Let's talk about tailwaters and free stones. So tailwaters, flows, 242 at Deckers, nines, uh, 96.8 at 11 mile and 102 at the Dream. Uh, obviously the Dream, last time we spoke, uh, there was just a big hailstorm, big thunderstorm that rolled through, and it was difficult to see, you know, what was going on there. Uh, I know that some of our guys in the shop have been have fished that in the you know, past weeks, uh, past couple of weeks, and uh, have to report that fishing has been uh, fairly productive there, uh, especially with the, the morning trico hatch. So, uh, you know, certainly have seen some changes up there. Uh, certainly saw some stranded fish, uh, some fish that didn't make it, and that's to be expected with a flash uh, flood like that. But um, you know, fishing is going to continue to be productive on the Dream Stream into fall. Uh, obviously, we're getting to the time of year where we see a couple runs of uh, kokanee and, and brown trout out of 11 mile. Um, you know, with that comes the crowd, so you know, be wary of that. We're not seeing a ton of uh, new fish in the system. You're certainly seeing some kokanee here and there, but not seeing a ton. Um, you know, part of that might be related to the fact that the, I think four years ago was the last time they were stocked, and they weren't stocked in as high as numbers they've been in the past. Uh, and since, since that fish doesn't naturally reproduce, you know, we expect to see a smaller run of kokanee this year, um, and certainly expect to see the same, you know, you know, if the water stays at 100, certainly see, expect to see some you know, good brown through the system. But obviously, be wary of them. Make sure you're not fishing to them on beds. Don't walk on the beds. You know, let them do their thing. So uh, there's going to be some of those in the future uh, for our, all of us to enjoy. So, you know, it's the annual PSA. You have to say it. You got to say it. It's that, that time of year. So there it was. That was your PSA. Um, so the dreams recovered. Blow uh, 11 mile, I know I uh, had a friend fish up there the other week and he uh, says so super productive with trichos. Uh, so trichos are on the menu on 11 mile. I know that's the same thing going for uh, Deckers and Cheeseman. Uh, trichos seem to be the primary insect coming off. There are some Miller moths coming off um, and we should start to see blue wings uh, coming off here shortly. Uh, in terms of flies that are gonna be effective, you can you know, use a parachute Adams, use uh, you know, a, a spinner trico, you know, a, you know, like any small trico pattern, a tails up trico from, from Landon. Uh, you can use that as a trail fly and then you know, maybe throw like a small gray or tan uh, caddis as your lead fly, uh, just a, sort of a cider fly for your you know, frame of reference when you're throwing to a, a, a pod rising to trico. So, uh, Otherwise, it's a subsurface game. You still can get fish on hopper droppers, especially when they're uh, tucked in 
uh, to the bank or they're in shallow ripples. Uh, but with nymphing, RS2s, uh, small copper johns, um, you know, black beauties, zebra midges, uh, we're starting to, you know, midges are starting to become a little bit more prevalent in terms of the subsurface fare, uh, and then blooming olive nymphs, so, you know, bars emerger, RS2s, I already said, um, you know, shot glass betas, uh, that sort of stuff, so WD-40s. Um, so, we're gonna start to get into a bit of that time of year where, you know, you're nymphing between hatches, and then, you know, waiting for those blueings to come off, especially in the cloudy weather, so. Uh, we should start to see blueings coming off in the next coming weeks, and uh, I'm excited about it. You'll certainly find me uh, nerding out up on the South Platte when those, uh, those bugs start flying, so excited for that. Uh, freestones, so freestones are fishing very well, particularly the Colorado, uh, with the elevated flows that we're seeing on the Colorado. Uh, I know the a couple of the upstream tributaries, the Blue, the Williams Fork, have both uh, have elevated flows, and that has you know, put you know sort of new life into the season up on the Colorado. Um, you know, our guide Tim commented that he saw poppers, trichos, blueing olives, caddis, red quills on the Colorado the other day, and fish were rising to all of them. So. Um, you know, as we progress through September, I would expect the trichos to start to fall off, the blooming olives to start to you know, play a larger role, and it's only be a matter of time before you come up on those flats and you just see nose after nose, you know, rising to blooming olive dries. So I can't wait for that. Can't wait to break out those extended body BWOs, you know, the mole flies, you know, parachute atoms, purple hazes, you know, what, whatever might flow your blade, just straight blueing olives, straight, straight betas. Um, and you know, get get to some rising fish with some beautiful fall colors surrounding me. I uh, can't wait. So, summer's summer ain't over technically, but certainly will be over by the end of September and into October when uh, you know fall really starts to take hold. So, fall fishing one of my favorite times to be out on the water. Um, free stones, otherwise, chubbies, PMXs, hippie stompers, stimulators. Small, generally a smaller size on those, and then dropping, um, you know, a smaller patch rubber legs, whether it be a 10 or a 12, and then maybe you know a dirty bird, a hot belly PT, starting to become rainbow warrior season up there. Yes, uh, bigger zebra midges will do the trick, uh, and you can throw some of the smaller stuff. But generally, I would like to say 16 or 18 on the smaller nymphs. Uh, blueing olives are going to start to play a bigger role. So shot glass bays, anything that has a little bit of extra weight. Uh, that double shot bait is the, the shade ties is also a good fly. Um, you know, so anything gets has a little weight gets down, and you can you know, start to find fish that might be above the bottom of the river, but they they're not completely elevated and rising. Um, you know, they're just sort of looking for that mid column meat. So uh, yeah, I I should also mention streamers. I mean streamers for me are a good option year round, but you're going to start to see some aggressive feeding from uh, rainbows and browns alike uh, as sunlight starts to dwindle as we start to get less sun through the day uh, and we start to get into the you know to that fall season fish need to eat before the winter time and they you know will move to big uh, big offerings so it's a great time to throw articulated streamers uh, out of the boat or walk waiting uh, either one um, one of my favorite things to do to see that super visual eat. So, yep, there it is. That's the bi-weekly fishing report and forecast. Hopefully this is the last time to see you see the back of the truck. Hopefully we're back in the uh, the new computer desk 3000 or whatever we called it uh, next week or two weeks from now. And uh, yeah, see you guys out on the water here in the shop. Talk to you guys later, bye.